Does it look weird? Uh, yeah, you look really awkward on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all stuck. Mm. <laughs> back to my channel oh i'm getting stuck on everything um if you're new here i'm a t12 complete paraplegic my legs don't work and i'm going to be talking about going on an airplane when you are wheelchair bound um so i use a wheelchair i can't use my legs um i can't walk stand etc and i'm going to be talking about taking a flight when you are paraplegic as it can be a bit of a hoo-ha i've got my whoop I'll be showing you what I put in my hand luggage. I'll be talking about going to the toilet, which will involve these, and giving you the answers to some of the questions that you gave me. Okay, so I go in the airport, I check in my bags, and the first thing I do is go to the assisted travel section. So it should be, this was in Birmingham airport, hopefully it's the same in similar airports, and I went to the assisted travel, I told them that I was there, I told them I'm paraplegic, can't walk, can't stand, and I need the aisle chair, um, which is very uncomfortable, and you'll see about that later. And when it came to doing my hand luggage, there was actually fast track um, queues for those with disabilities, which I thought was pretty cool, so I actually was able to skip the queue. Uh, when it came as well to getting searched, instead of going through the search things that um, that detect if you've got anything on you, I can't go through there. So there was a little blue disabled sign. Um, so I went that way, they kind of, they were like, they saw me in the wheelchair and they're like, this way. Anyway, as soon as they saw me and I went to the right of that big search thing and um, I just put my arms out. They like, so <laughs> gave me a bit of a touch, touch down. I had to lean forward and they checked my butt <laughs> and also did a kind of a like, on my thighs, um, I didn't actually take my shoes off, they didn't check my shoes, and I could have been having a bomb there, um, and then they kind of like checked my wheelchair bag and stuff like that, but it was actually quite lax, I found that they didn't, they kind of just did a, a general one, and I think it's a bit, I guess they were a bit embarrassed, like touching up a disabled girl. I was directed to another little waiting area that said assisted travel, it also had a logo of a sunflower, which is, um, I think it's just like a disability one, it's the special assistance um, logo, so they had a little flower on it, a little sunflower, I've never seen this before, um, but yes, I waited there for a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about now the aisle chair. So the aisle chair is a very, very thin chair that is fitted to go down the aisle and it's for people that literally can't walk. It's a very, very thin aisle chair. Getting onto it can be quite difficult. Um, I kind of, I, I, I was able to obviously lift and shift like I normally do. However, I kind of had the airport people like helping me in. Um, once I'm in the aisle chair, I had to really hold my legs. I didn't like, there was no straps to the floor around my feet or anything. So I had to really keep a hold tight of my legs. They then strapped me in and it was like a cross shape. Um, so like a seat belt, but I was kind of like this. Um, to get me on the plane, I had airport uh, people behind me. They kind of had to, they had to kind of lean me back like this. But again, it was quite scary. I had to be like holding my knees very, very tightly. I had one, one in front, one behind, uh, kind of doing a wheelie trying to get on this plane. Once I got on the plane, um, there's obviously no one on it. They put you on first. So for the aisle chair and being uh, disabled like me, you go on first and you come off last. That is normally the procedure. So I went on first. Um, I had the first row of seats as well. Um, so I just went straight to the left. To get into the seats, yeah, there is no lift up handles on airport seat. They are sturdy, they are strong, they uh, are very, very like this and you've obviously got quite, they're quite big, the armrests. Um, so to get in onto that, I had to get my boyfriend to hold my legs. I then had to kind of do a kind of this, like that over the seats and they're kind of like worried and are kind of grabbing onto you a lot um so yeah I, I have to kind of bum shuffle over the hand over the armrest i forgot to say as well the bit 
Um, where you enter the plane is different. It's on that little tunnel thing and you go in from the side on a little side door. Um, so you're on that in your own wheelchair, you then transfer onto the aisle chair and get on the plane like that. Once I'm on the plane, I always go to the window seat. The reason being is on flights, there are normally no disabled toilets for ones that are short flights. So like even mine that was four hours, it's, it didn't have a disabled toilet. They have the normal toilet. There is no way that I'm embarrassing myself getting carried into a toilet without my chair it is just not safe, it's not practical, and it's embarrassing. So what I have to do is I have to catheterize on the plane with my bag, with my bag catheters. So I cannot wee by myself, I cannot push, I cannot wee like that. So I have to insert it into my urethra at this tube. This is a Speedy Cath Compact set. I get these free. Um, I get bulk delivery um, every month or so. And how these work are, it has a bag attached to here, which takes yeah, 750 millilitres. So what you do is you twist it and you have this little thing. So you're kind of thinking, how on earth do I do this without people noticing? And the thing is, I don't even know if people notice. I try to do it as discreetly as possible. I have a hoodie, I have some sort of blanket over me and I catheterise in my seat. It is just not worth it for me trying to get into a able-bodied toilet, it's not worth it. However, sitting down, it is bloody hard to get these things in. So I'll be sitting down like this. So you obviously can't get to urethra from here. So I kind of have to lean, lean forward. I try to put my legs slightly out like this and kind of struggle to get it in. It is a struggle. Um, I really do wish they could maybe just Bloody put some disabled toilets in. I don't know how, I don't know why they don't. I don't know if it's just the space thing. I'm not sure, but there's no disabled toilets on any plane that I've ever been on. So this is the solution. So then I've got urine in a bag, which isn't pleasant. However, I just have to put it in my hand luggage, um, like wrapped up in a, in a, in a little bin bag. But yeah, it's not, it's not the most decent thing to do. So what I have in my flight bag, so this is my hand luggage. I had this lovely little um, headrest. It was so nice because it, it, it's, uh, I got this from Amazon and it just goes like that and then you can have a nice sleep. Um, so I put that in my hand luggage as four hours is quite long. So, uh, so that was in my hand luggage as well as some headphones. I also put <laughs> my massive, this electronical tire pump because you have to put electrics in your hand luggage. So that just took up the bloody room. Um, I then of course had my catheters. I had about three of these just in case. Um, on the flight I had, I had, um, I had to empty my bladder twice. Um, and I try not to drink too much on a plane, but you have to enjoy yourself. Sometimes I take quite a few of these, so you know. Obviously, got my passports. Um, I also put a little eye mask in. Not for anything kinky, just to sleep. <laughs> Not that you do anything kinky on a plane, what am I about? And then just like a bottle of water and some sort of cover up I had in here. It's not in there anymore, I don't know what I'm trying to show you there. Then getting out of the plane, I had to do the classic bum shuffle. So I'm going to the right, so I'm kind of doing this. Sometimes you fall back in your seat, you have to keep going, keep trying. Have my boyfriend carry my legs for me to take the weight off. You get back in the aisle chair, they wheel you, um, they wheel you along. I then transfer back into my manual chair. Oh, as well. They actually put a tag on my wheelchair. Um, there was a tag. As well, when you go flying, they put a little tag on the wheelchair. I've just ripped this off now. This just says Birmingham, a load of numbers and a tag thing. So I guess it's just to identify it. Um, so they put that on the back of my wheelchair. Um, and that's how they identify the right chair. You then go through all the queues and all the stuff to get your baggage. There was actually a massive queue, yeah? And then there was a picture of a, a wheelchair and like some blind person and it said, this is for the wheelchair people. So we got through straight away. So that's good. It kind of takes some of the stress out when you don't have to queue up. And it's the same when you drop your bags off, you can have the fast track option. So it's great. So you go through that, there was a disabled lift, perfectly fine. Go down, get my bags. Um, I then uh, went to the TUI rep as we 
flew with Tui. We're going on a two, we went to a two cents Tory um, resort. So before we went, we told Tui that we need a taxi. They do these for free for, for disabled people. So we had a taxi to the hotel, which was about 45 minutes. It was quite long um, for free. However, when the taxi came, it was inaccessible. No one. Uh, they obviously apologised and everything. I think they said it was a bit of a miscommunication um, with the Turkish and everything. And they uh, bought like a big van with no ramp, uh, which was not good. <laughs> so it didn't. It, it, I I couldn't get in that one. I then had to. They re rearranged like just a normal car. I managed to get in that. And we went to the hotel. So after our amazing, amazing holiday, dream holiday, I want to be back. Um, we had a taxi again. This was all rearranged before. When the taxi came, it was a massive van that literally I, that was inaccessible. So the guy carried me. He actually carried me. And so we were like, uh, I don't think this is the right one. And he's like Turkish and, and he's trying to, like, he doesn't understand. Um, so I said, no, I can't walk. I can't walk. I can't get in. And he proceeded to carry me in my wheelchair onto his big bus. I don't know why he was so keen to have me. Why can't you just rearrange something else? So there's a big, massive bus. Um, so I got carried on the hotel uh, rep people carrying me with the taxi guy who was like 70 years old. We get to the uh, Dalaman airport and um, they had his, his random other taxi driver carrying me off in my wheelchair. We go to uh, looking for the uh, disabled bit. It was a bit less clear in the Turkish airport. Um, but we just told them we were there. There was like a green disabled sign, so we went towards that. Um, the aisle chair in Turkey was absolutely terrible. It was really, really terrible and very embarrassing because it had no arms to it. It did, They didn't have any straps. It was literally just a, a, a chair. And I was very embarrassed because I, one, I was tired because it was like two in the morning and I couldn't quite get on. So I had them all like trying to, trying to help me. Um, and they didn't understand English or anything. And then so I was like holding my legs, I was like, I can't balance, I can't balance. Because there was no straps on it at all. So there's obviously that miscommunication going on. Um, so I was just like this, terrified, because I, I couldn't balance, it was so thin. Um, uh, they did manage to get me on, I managed to get in my seats all right, but that was actually really embarrassing, and I don't know what kind of chair that was, because it had no straps, and that's not suitable for, for people with my disability. Um, a question I got as well was if I um, insure my wheelchair. So yes, we did travel insurance and everything for goods up to like five grand or something like that because my wheelchair is like three grand. Um, so we, we just uh, did that option. So I got insured through the travel bit. So if they messed up my chair, which they can do because some of my friends at basketball said they literally destroyed her wheelchair and it took a while for them to actually replace it. Luckily, nothing happened in my wheelchair. It was all good. Um, I think just the worst experience was just that aisle chair in Turkey. It was just terrible. Um, I guess not all countries are going to have the facilities and, and stuff for people with my kind of disability. Um, but yeah, we had an amazing holiday. Um, someone asked as well if flying is too much of a faff. I personally love flying. It will never put me off the extra kind of hassle of it. Um, I really love it and it's... Um, I just love being able to travel and I'll be saving up for my next one soon because like I work so hard It's the summer holidays now. I'm a te uh, teaching assistant in a special needs school So I'm having a nice rest. It is a hard job and you, you really need the uh, the breaks If you enjoyed the video big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye